Shalom, I want to give all praise and glory unto Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem, Harakakudash. Double honors goes to the elder apostles of Great Millstone for teaching us the truth. And I also want to acknowledge all the Akiam who are pushing this truth on the streets of Babylon week in and week out. <clears throat> all right, so I'm going to play a couple quick videos. Um, as you already know, I'm sure uh, the United States military, they uh, they killed a Iranian military official. His name was Qasem Soleimani. And now, you know, this is basically the men of the Lord, the watchmen. We know this is the uh, the beginning of, uh, you know, World War Three, you know, starting up, starting to heat. We're in 2020 now and the tensions are already getting getting high. <clears throat> you know, and you have to keep in mind that Iran is a uh, is a ally of Russia, okay? So Russia is the one who's going to actually send the missiles to the United States first according to biblical prophecy. So let me play this video. <clears throat> this is Donald Trump and uh, Melania Trump uh, walking into their New Year's Eve party um, the other night, and here's a he's he's uh, answering some questions from the media. So let's play it. As soon as we saw there was a potential for problems, they got in, and there was no problem whatsoever. I also want to thank <coughs> the Iraqi government. They really stepped up. I spoke to the Prime Minister today. I thanked him, uh, but they stepped up very nicely. I don't think that would be a good idea for Iran. It wouldn't last very long. Do I want to? No. I want to have peace. I like peace. And Iran should want peace more than anybody. So I don't see that happening. No, I don't think Iran would want that to happen. It would go very quickly. Well, we'll see. Uh, I have a very good relationship with Kim Jong-un. Uh, I know he's uh, sending out certain messages about Christmas presents, and I hope his Christmas present is a beautiful vase. That's what I'd like, a vase. You think it will be, sir? As opposed to something else. I, I don't know. I, look, he likes me. I like him. We get along. Uh, he's representing his country. I'm representing my country. We have to do what we have to do. But he All right, so there's that video. So you heard him say he likes peace, right? And he's he wants to avoid war. And then uh, let me go to this article, because he was just spoke, speaking about Iran, and uh, in that video on New Year's Eve. And then you know, here we are, December third, less than you know, less than a week into the uh, New Year. And uh, let me see if I can get to the original. Bear with me, my bad. Here we go. <clears throat> Less than a week after he said he wants peace, he goes and kills, he orders the hit on uh, on the dude, uh, Qasem Soleimani. All right, so we know that... Let me see if I can get this video to... Oh, here we go. Here's the video of the aftermath of the the killing of. Um, let me turn this down. You got these stupid ads. <clears throat> but anyway, you know, this is just the aftermath of of that that man from Iran, Qasem Soleimani. This is where they basically killed him. It was a U.S. drone. Soleimani was plotting imminent and sinister attacks on American diplomats and military personnel, but we caught him in the act. We took action last night to stop a war. We did not take action to start a war. He's an idiot. <laughs> Yeah, 
ਕਹਿੰਦੇ ਹਨ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਰਹਿੰਦੀ an arrogant idiot <clears throat> this is propaganda here they're showing you that they're showing you that a small amount of people celebrated the death of the the Iranian military leader and then uh, the majority was mourning him mourning his death you know because he was looked at it like I, I saw one reporter say that he was looked at as a demi demigod so anyway that was that video so they you know I saw one reporter saying that they looked at that general as a demigod demigod you know he was highly renowned um, <clears throat> but this this says Iranian general traveled with impunity until US drones found him and I looked up that word impunity and it means um, it means basically you're you've escaped judgment or you 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 went punishment free for a crime that you committed so those are the allegations like you say Trump was saying that he was plotting a you know plotting so, something an attack on America in some shape or form which you know that's that propaganda of course they're going to say that after they go in and kill a Iranian military leader so let's get to the scriptures we're going to go into uh I'm going to start off in uh well, we'll read Psalms 58 and 3. <clears throat> Actually, we'll start out at 2. And the wicked is Esau, Edom, the so-called white man. So, let's read it. Verse 2. Yeah, in heart ye work wickedness. Ye weigh the violence of your hands in the earth. The wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. Their poison is like the poison of a serpent. They are like the deaf adder that stoppeth her ear, which will not hearken to the voice of charmers, charming never so wisely. Break their teeth, O Yahweh, in their mouth. Break out the great teeth of the young lions, O Yahweh. All right. So, you know, just like Trump, he first you saw in the New Year's Eve video, he's saying he doesn't want war. And then just a couple days later, He's doing basically an act of war, you know, um, calling the shot, you know, basically on the uh, Iranian uh, military official Qasem Soleimani. All right. So let's go to um, Isaiah. We're going to go to actually not Isaiah. Let's go to Maccabees. Let's just show you how this Edomite operates, man. This is going to be 1st Maccabees, and we're going to start at 29. This is his nature, all right? This is uh, during the Maccabees when Antiochus Epiphanes, who was an Edomite leader, who um, basically took over in Jerusalem, all right? took over the Israelites homeland this is first Maccabees 1 and 29 it says after two years fully expired the king sent his chief collector of tribute unto the cities of Judah who came unto Jerusalem with a great multitude all right so these Edomites came into Jerusalem with a great multitude verse 30 and spake peaceable words unto them but all was deceit, for when they had given him credence, he fell suddenly upon the city and smote it very sore and destroyed much people of Israel. All right, so that's what this Edomite does, man. He speaks peaceable words. You know, he, he's got everybody thinking he's the good guy fighting for um, peace on earth, when indeed he's the, he's the wicked one, man. And he's a serpent, you know, treacherous like a serpent, 
You know, one one minute on New Year's Eve, he's speaking, hey, I don't want war. And then a couple days later, he's killing Iran's military uh, general, you know. So that's I just wanted to show you the characteristic of these Edomites. All right. <clears throat> and they're prideful and arrogant, you know. So uh, let's let's go to. Well, let's go real quick. Just talk about their pride since I brought it up. All right, so we'll go to Malachi 1 and 4. Where Edom, whereas Edom saith, we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, they shall build, but I will throw down, and they shall call them the border of wickedness, and the people against whom the Lord hath indignation forever. All right, so we, we, that's showing you that Edom is the, is the wicked, according to the Bible. All right. Um, let me go to Obadiah real quick because we all know that chapter is just pure fire against Edom the so called white man let's see and here, here it is right here we read, we read one the vision of Obadiah, one, Obadiah 1 and 1. Thus saith the Lord, Yahweh, concerning Edom. We have heard a rumor from the Lord, and an ambassador is sent among the heathen. Arise ye, and let us rise up against her in battle. Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen. Thou art greatly despised. And the heathen means nations. So all of the nations are going to despise this Edomite, this so-called white man, for what, he's do, what he does, the way he operates. Even his own people, you know, eventually are going to come down on him. So basically, um, <clears throat> that's what's going to happen. Let's let's go to verse three. The pride of thine heart hath deceived thee, thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock, whose habitation is high, that saith in his heart, Who shall bring me down to the ground? Though thou that exalt thyself as the eagle, and thou shalt set the nest among the stars, thence I will bring thee down. Say it's the Lord. All right, so let's go jump down to seven. All the men of thy confederacy have brought thee even to the border. The men that were at peace with thee have deceived thee and prevailed against thee. They that eat the bread have laid a wound under thee. There is none understanding in him. Meaning there's no understanding of in Esau. All right, and they're going to, they're going to, be destroyed by Yahweh Shai and the chariots. And that is coming soon. Because as you can see, you know, these uh, these prophecies are becoming fulfilled. Starting out with this uh, World War Three getting, uh, you know, getting uh, the beginning of World War Three is, is starting to manifest, you know. So this Edomite, all the nation, meaning the heathen, are all getting sick of this Edomite. And pretty soon, they're all going to point their missiles toward Babylon, America, all right? You see the pride of Donald Trump. You see the pride of the people. I mean, if you get on social media and you see the, you know, these articles about, you know, what just happened, and you have, you see all the comments, you see all the pride of all these Edomites, man, these Trump supporters, and how they, they feel invincible, you know? They, they act like, they literally believe that their kingdom will never end, you know, but that's because they are faithless. You know, they're non-believers. You know, they have no. <laughs> they're fools because that's that's what the faithless. That's what the faithless are. Fools. They don't believe in the high power Yahweh. All right. So that's the pride I wanted to bring out. And let's go to Psalms. Or I'm sorry. Let's go to Isaiah. Uh, where did we go? Isaiah 49, 11. This is dealing with their pride again. Oh, man. Let me see. Maybe it's Psalms.
Oops. Okay, 49.11. I messed up. I said Isaiah, but it's actually Psalms. Psalm 49.11, it says, Their inward thought is that their houses shall continue forever and their dwelling places to all generations. They call their lands after their own names. So that's what the Edomite does, man. He names all the lands after himself that he conquers. And his inward thought is that his houses and his generations will continue forever. You know, but the word of the Lord dictates otherwise, you know. But they're non-believers. They don't believe in, in Yahweh. You know, they're, they're self-proclaimed atheists. And, you know, that's why they, they believe their houses will continue forever because they don't believe the words in the Bible. Okay. And they got the two thirds and the rest of the heathen to have the same mindset that they have. You know, that's why they, they like it says in Revelation, they drink and all, they're, they're all drunk. All the nations are drunk off the wine of Babylon, which the word wine is doctrine. All right. That's a parable for doctrine. So all of these heathen, they, they believe the doctrines of the Edomite, you know, and, the, and they believe the same way the Edomite does, you know. I, I was actually, I went to pick up uh, my daughter because she was getting her, her, I guess she was getting her no, toenails done or pedicure is what they call it. And when I got there, it was spiritual because, um, you know, I was sitting there and I started watching this uh, Moabite was washing her feet, you know, and uh, basically doing the pedicure, right? But see, that's that. There's a reason why all of these Moabites own the uh, nail salons, you know, because that's their lot. That's the lot they've been given by Yahweh, because the Bible the Bible says um, that Moab is the wash pot of Israel. All right. So <laughs> when you go into that, it was kind of spiritual because you know I never really have been in that setting. You know, at a nail salon, but I had to wait because she wasn't done. So, um, you know, I, I I went ahead and I actually told the lady she was a Moabite. I told her, "Did you know, do you know who your nationality is according to the, the Bible?" And you know, they don't believe the Bible either. You know, but anyway, since I brought it up, let's go to Psalm sixty and eight, and it says here. Mo in the middle of the screen. Moab is my wash pot. Over Edom will I cast out my shoe. Philistia, triumph thou because of me. Alright. Who will bring me into the strong city? Who will lead me into Edom? Alright, so th that's just what I wanted to read. But and, and you when you go into that word wash pot, it literally the the the, the uh, article that I found on it was going into the fake Jews that there's it says that they're supposedly so clean that they you know they would have people wash their feet um you know because they're trying to again deceive you that they're these clean people right but when literally in fact Edom we know that they're filthy vile creatures Edomites you know but anyway the point of that was just that that Moabite woman she was washing my daughter's feet last night, and it's spiritual, you know what I mean? Because Moab is the wash pot according to the scriptures, and when you go into that what word wash pot, it talks about, um, you know, that the Jewish, the fake Jews, you know, would get their feet washed because, you know, they're supposedly um, very clean people, which we know it's actually the contrary, you know. They're actually filthy, vile people, according to the Bible. But that's the deception they put. And, you know, these Moabites, when I started talking to the lady, she was, uh, you know, she was, I started telling her a little bit about the scripture. I said, hey, you know, Edom is, is the devil, you know, the white man, the so-called white man. And she, she didn't disagree, but at the same time, she was condemning her own nation, which is, was China. And she was condemning China, you know, ahead of condemning uh, America or the Edomites. You know, so showing you all these heathen nations are drinking off the wine of Babylon, man. 
because this lady had more bad things to say about China, her own nation, which is Moab, than uh, America, which is Edom. All right, so I got off topic, but now let's go to, uh, I want to just go to Isaiah, and we're going to go to uh, 8, chapter 8, and start at verse 11. You know, these these uh, this war is starting to get kindled. This fire is starting to get kindled. And, you know, it's like when you go to make some uh, soup, you know, you go turn on the, the burner and, and the, you know, the soup starts to simmer. And then if you leave it on too long, it starts to boil. Well, the actions of these Edomites and Donald Trump, you know, going in and killing uh, this Iranian military official, they basically turned the burner on. You know what I mean? Starting to get it to this World War Three to simmer. And we're right at the beginning of 2020. It's already heating up, man. The burner's been turned on, if you will. You know? Isaiah 8. And we're going to start at... Um, we're going to start at 11. For the Lord spake thus unto me with a strong hand and instructed me that I should not walk in the way... Of this people, saying, Say ye not a confederacy to all them to whom this people shall say a confederacy, neither fear ye their fear nor be afraid. So Yahweh is saying, Hey, don't fear these heathen on these confederacy that's against you. You know, don't fear. We're the men of the Lord, you're not even supposed to, you're supposed to embrace the fact that this war is about to pop off, you know. You got to be in that mindset, you know, this, that means that our resting place is getting closer and closer, you know, but let's go to the precept real quick to show you the Confederacy, Psalm 83, and this is that Confederacy that that verse is talking about. Says Psalm eighty three and two. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. The head is Esau, Edom. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. And thy people are the Israelites, so-called uh, black man, Native American man, and the so-called Hispanic man, and consulted against thy hidden ones. And us Israelites, we are the hidden ones, right? Because they don't tell you that you're an Israelite. They, they give you these bywords. So they, they keep you in darkness, all right? Verse 4, They have said, Come, and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may not be no more in remembrance. For they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee, meaning they are together against us. And the, the verse 6 tells you the, the, uh, the nations, or the heathen, the list of our enemies, starting out with the tabernacles of Edom, is verse 6. The tabernacles of Edom and the Ishmaelites of Moab and the Hagarenes. All right. And I just want to go there because I don't want to get too much into this, but I just wanted to prove the point of this confederacy, meaning these Edomites, so called white men, the Ishmaelites, those Arabs, so called Arabs, and Moab are the so called, uh, the so called um, Chinese. You know, those are the. Basically, the top three enemies of Israel. So, I just wanted to pull that out. But we're going to go back to Isaiah 8 and 11. So, there it is in verse 12. Say ye not a confederacy to all them to whom this people shall say. A confederacy, neither fear ye their fear nor be afraid. So the men of the Lord, you're not going to fear any of those heathen nations that are against you. All right. It says verse 13, sanctify the Lord of hosts himself and let him be your fear and let him be your dread. All right. So that's what we do. We fear Yahweh instead of these heathen nations. All right. Verse 14, and he shall be. And actually, you know what? Let me go in on this a little bit. I should actually start it. Let me backtrack. Verse 10 up top. Take counsel together and it shall come to naught. Speak the word and it shall not stand for Yahweh is with us. Alright. So let me precept these verses a little bit. 
We're going to go to Job and uh, 5, all right? And we're going to go to verse, start at verse 12. He disappointed the, dis, the, the devices of the crafty so that their hands cannot perform their enterprise. All right. So this is dealing with Yahweh. He disappoints the devices of the crafty. And who did we read are the crafty people? The ones that take crafty counsel against us are the heathen nations, starting out with the Edomites. All right. So Yahweh says, he disappointed the devices, meaning the de word device means wicked mind. So he di disappointed the wicked mind of the crafty so that their hands cannot perform their enterprise. He taketh the wise in their own craftiness, and the counsel of the froward is carried headlong. They meet with darkness in the daytime and grope in the noonday as in the night. But he saveth the poor from the sword, from their mouth and from the hand of the mighty. All right, and what's that sword? If we're talking about it right now. It's that World War III. Those missiles are going to be the modern day sword, all right, of Esau, Edom, and the rest of these heathen nations. <coughs> but the men of Yahweh, we're going to put our trust in Yahweh, and we're going to be delivered from even the sword, all right? Um, let me see. So the poor, verse 16. So the poor hath hope, and iniquity stoppeth her mouth. Behold, happy is the man whom Yahweh correcteth. Therefore despiseth not thou the chastening of the Almighty. So even when we go through Jacob's trouble, because we know that judgment starts in the house of God, hey, we're not supposed to despise that chastisement that we have to go through, or even now, you know. Any type of chastisement we go through for our testimony, don't despise it, man. Embrace that thing. You know, and build yourself up in these scriptures. You know, this is a video of encouragement for for mine elect. You know, my my fellow elect brothers. Okay, and Lord willing, I'm part of that number. Um, verse eighteen: For he maketh sore and bindeth up; he woundeth and his hands make whole. He shall deliver thee in six troubles. Yeah, in seven there shall be no evil touch thee. All right, because we've been in captivity, I believe, in six different captivities. All right, so the brothers have the chart at the camp that shows all our captivities. But um, <clears throat> this seventh trouble is going to is speaking of this uh, this World War Three, and, and it says right here, in seven there shall no evil touch thee. Let's ver read verse 20. In famine he shall redeem thee from death, and in war from the power of the sword. Meaning those missiles. All right. So even when the missiles come, guess what? We're, we're going to be okay, man. The men who trust in Yahweh. The men who are calling on the, the correct name. Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai Bashem. All right. Um, so that's, that's what it is, you know. Let me keep reading. Thou shalt be hid, verse 21, Thou shalt be hid from the scourge of the tongue, neither shalt thou be afraid of the destruction when it cometh. At destruction and famine thou shalt laugh, neither shalt thou be afraid of the beasts of the earth. And the beasts of the earth are these Edomites and these heathen nations. Alright, verse 23, For thou shalt be in league with the stones of the field, and the beasts of the field shall be at peace with thee. And that's including that Leviathan, because <laughs> the, the Leviathan, which is a huge dragon, you know, and it's not just one dragon, but there's going to be many dragons that are going to change their places because the heat of those missiles is going to draw those Leviathans from the depths of the ocean, man, in their, in their caves, you know, where they stay in the depths of the ocean. They're going to come out and they're going to be, you know, predators on these heathen, all right? And right here it says in verse 23, For thou shalt be in league with the stones of the field, and the beasts of the field shall be at peace with thee. So during all this destruction and, and, and chaos, you may see a, a grizzly bear or a leviathan, you know, and they're not going to harm the men of the Lord. All right? The Yahweh is not going to put the spirit 